Hey guys, Daniel here with the Truck Insurance Channel and I'm going over the steps to apply and get set up and approved with UIIA. So first off, I've got uh, quite a few tools I've, I've built out on my website to make this process a little easier. There's quite a bit of follow-up after you actually apply. So stay tuned for those, they're, they're free. I've also got a ton, like everything I'm gonna talk about, all, each step essentially has links and other videos associated with it. So make sure you're checking out the description below. Uh, all those links will be there. And the steps I go through are not necessarily the steps everyone has to do in the order that I have them. People come from different like points of origin, I guess. Like you might already have your motor carrier authority set up, you might not. You might be doing different types of operations, so you might need to change some things. I'm gonna go over all of that, but just keep that in mind. Everybody's starting from a different point. Don't forget, you can always schedule calls with us if you have questions about anything. That's all free. We don't charge for like consulting, anything like that. And you can also email us. Uh, again, all of the info for that is down in the description. Uh, so yeah, to start off, obviously there's some like things you need before you can apply. Tax ID or EIN, your motor carrier authority, so you like your DOT and MC needs to be active, all right? There's a few little exceptions to that depending on your type of operation, like if you're hauling your own goods out of the ports or something like that off the rail yards. But for the most part, everybody that's doing this in a four higher capacity needs to have their motor carrier authority active. If you have been doing, if you're like already active and you're operating, let's just say you're doing general freight, you wanna to switch to do an intermodal or, or add it to what you can do. You probably need to add containers to your authority. So you can do that with just an MCS 150. It's quick and online link below to do that easy enough if you're starting from scratch from the very beginning you got to apply for your motor carrier authority all that got a video below on doing that specifically for getting into UIIA and intermodal next you're gonna need a SCAC code you might already have one if not it's $84 link below as well as a video pretty simple and easy you get it in a day or two it's nothing complicated super easy you don't actually have to have it to apply for UIIA but if you don't have it when you apply, then you have to email them, wait for them to update it. It's just an extra step. Like I would do it ahead of time to reduce anything that other people, like, so you don't have to wait on other people to update anything. Like you wanna reduce as much as that as possible. And that's, that's my whole thing behind this is like, remove human error, you know, everywhere you can. Next, uh, talk about insurance real quick, okay? This, this is one of the most difficult parts of this whole process. Finding insurance, that offers the UIIA endorsements and meets all the other requirements can be kind of difficult, okay? Uh, there's a whole lot of agents that won't even touch this just because there's a lot of extra work that you have to do as an agent to help your clients, the truckers, get approved. The biggest thing is the auto liability, right? That has what's called the UIIE-1 or CA something or another endorsement on the auto liability, all right? Auto liability limit has to be a million, okay? Uh, across the board. There's no one that requires higher than that. You might do other operations where you, you know, maybe hazmat or something and you also do UIA. Maybe you have more than a million, that's okay. But you have to have at least a million and you have to have this uh, UIIA endorsement as well as hired and non-owned autos. So like most motor carriers have scheduled auto, auto liability policies, right? In addition to that, you gotta have hired and non-owned. Those are two other categories that are attached to your auto liability, okay? Not every insurance company is gonna offer that, especially if you're a new motor carrier. We started working with Berkshire and all, you know, like the dozens of Berkshire companies under the Berkshire name. So if you need help with insurance, we can help you out with that. If you're going through another agency or uh, with another company, still feel free to like use all the resources we have on our website. It'll really help with the process. So yeah, if you're a brand new motor carrier and you're looking to do all this, make sure you're planning ahead because you don't want to get stuck with one insurance company that can't offer the coverages for this. And if you have to switch, sometimes it can suck, you know, having to pay another down payment, that type of thing. But you might have to just to be able to go do this, right? Like not every insurance company offers UIIA endorsements. Uh, so yeah, auto liability and then general liability, totally separate thing, all right? General liability, cargo, trailer interchange is a big one and that's where things can vary a lot. Uh, I think the cheapest, or like, not the cheapest, but the lowest limit for trailer interchange is like 15 or 20K, all right? And it goes as high as 65,000. So 
when you're going through the list of equipment providers, like you'll see when you do the application, it'll tell you what the most, you know, the highest limit you'll need for trailer interchange and you need to work with us or your agent, whoever you're working with, to make sure you're covered for that. And then the tricky part is workers' comp and employer liability. Not everyone needs this. Most people don't, all right? A lot of times you pay your drivers or yourself a 1099, right? Like you're, they're not actually employees. So depending on what state you're in, and I have a link below to help you read up on this. Uh, there's a link below that, that you can select the state you're based out of and it will tell you the requirements for workers comp. The UIIA, UIIA says you got to have workers comp, but you don't actually have to if you're not required by your state law around workers comp law. Okay, same for employer liability. Sometimes those are interchangeable. Uh, We've got, and I'll talk about this in a little bit because it's kind of further down the list of steps, but a workers' comp and employer liability exemption letter you can send in. We've made that pretty easy, so I'll talk about that in a second. But that's it for insurance. Next is the UIIA application. I've got a video going through that. It's actually pretty quick and painless. It's not very complicated. You just want to have like the SCAT code, your EIN, all that in place beforehand. Uh, that way it's just less steps to have to follow up on. As soon as you submit that, it's like 355 bucks. Go ahead and pay it. It has the option to skip it. You know, I don't know why anyone would do that, but it's $355 unless you're a IA NA member, then it's like $311. You pay that, you move on. Quick note, if you are applying for your motor carrier authority, cause you want to go sign up for UIIA and start hauling intermodal loads, I would wait to apply for UIIA until you're pretty close to going active with your motor carrier authority because you only get 30 days after you apply for UIIA before they will delete your application. You'd have to start over again and pay that fee again of $355. So if you're not ready to, to do the whole thing, don't do it. Uh, and don't do it as soon as you apply for your motor carrier authority if you're doing that because that 21 day waiting period. I know some people get it sooner than that. You know, they don't do the whole 21 days, but the general rule of thumb is gonna take 21 days to get your motor carrier authority out active. So wait till at least you're closer to going active, if not after, to apply for UIIA, because uh, you don't want to waste that $355. As soon as you apply and everything goes through, you're going to get two emails. The first email is saying, congrats, you're now pending approval, and it'll have a list of things that you still have to do, the follow-up tasks to get approved. The second email you're going to get, you have to forward to your insurance agent. There's a couple problems with this email right now as of recording this video because I just did a UIA application within the last week. The equipment provider list that comes in that email, right? Like all these equipment providers that you might go work for or with, uh, they have to be listed as additional insureds on your insurance. And unless you get a blanket additional insured, you can talk with your agent about that, see if it's possible. Um, it might not be dependent on the insurance company. Uh, but each one of them has to be listed as additional insured. And the, the equipment provider list that comes in that generated email that you'll get as soon as you apply that you're supposed to forward to your agent is not the updated list. I've got a checklist on my website that you can go through and click which ones you're going to work with that'll populate the, the actual updated checklist. So you can use that. Uh, but in there, you're gonna forward that email to your agent, all right, or us if we're your agent. Then your agent has to fill out an Accord 22. It's not a. It, it looks kind of like a COI, but it's different. It's it's made specifically for UIIA. Don't go trying to send a COI, a regular COI, to UIIA. It won't work. There's a specific one that your agent has to fill out and send directly to UI. Or actually, they have to go in. Like I have a portal login for UIIA for my agency. So I have to go in there and submit everything. Next is the participating party agreement. When you go through the application for UIA online, you have to, it, it says in there, you gotta like print it, download it, print it off, sign it, scan it, or email it back to yourself, whatever, and then forward it to the UIA or fax it. Uh, that's a pretty lengthy process. I have a form that you can fill out on my website to submit this uh, participating party agreement. You just fill out the form. It populates the uh, the actual agreement and forwards that, emails it straight to UIA. Really simple and easy. So that's, that's one of those tools you can use. Next is we're gonna talk more about the workers' comp thing. So if you are exempt, if you don't need workers' compensation according to workers' comp law in your state, which most people don't, 
I have another form on the website that allows you to fill that out, capture signature, and it will populate into a letter, an exemption letter for, you know, essentially from your company, and it automatically gets sent over to the UIA, and they mark you as exempt from workers' comp, so you can pass on that for your insurance. So if you want to use that, use it at your will. It's free. We don't charge for it. If you, even if you don't get insurance through us, like use it. It's, it's there. It's for everybody to use. Uh, once you do all that, you can check status. I mean, you might check status at any point, right? Like as soon as you apply, you'll get your logins. Uh, you create your password as you're doing it. You can go log in on the UII website anytime and see if there's anything missing or what you're waiting on, all that good stuff. Next, let's talk about equipment providers. So each one of them might have additional paperwork or you need to call or email them and have them add you to their motor carrier list or they might require you to call UIIA uh, or email UIIA directly to get added to their motor carrier list. Uh, it's a little complicated but there is a uh, addendum like form I guess and you could say all like all the additional requirements for each equipment provider I've got a link to below uh, so also there's like kind of nitty gritty details about working with them in there. So you might want to read up on that ahead of time uh, for any, any equipment provider you're interested in working with. Last, uh, some of the rail yards actually require you to register drivers in the IDD, the intermodal driver database. So if you have to just add your drivers in there, it's pretty quick and easy. There's also some videos on the UII website that show you how to do that and how to set up your dispatch office. Uh, all pretty easy. Aside from that, that's it. You go and you'll get approved and then you can start working with these equipment providers. There's different load boards you can do this off of. Amazon Relay, DAT, Load Match, Truck Stop, all those can do intermodal. Just to reiterate, if you need uh, insurance, we can help you out with that. There's a quote form below that does everything you need it's very specific to uh, this UIA stuff. So I'll do a video below as well how to fill that out. There's a broker list too. I've got access. Uh, got a link to that. So if you want to see which brokers you could work with, there's a list below. Also, uh, as far as like our affiliates go, RTS will do factoring on intermodal loads, and you can get their fuel card too if you want. So check those links out. Uh, we've got all of our affiliate partners down below. Check those out and check out some of these other videos on getting started with uh, UIIA. If you have any questions, need help with anything else, comment below. Don't forget to schedule calls with us if you'd like. That's free. We don't charge for any type of consulting. Uh, like and subscribe. And thank you.